Welcome back to the introduction to particle systems. In this video, we are going to create our third and final effect, which is going to be sparks coming up out of our flames and billowing up through our smoke. Now, before we jump into that, though, there is one thing that's kind of driving me a little bit nuts about this effect. Yeah. And that's that our smoke kind of gets really puffy down here at the base. You'll notice it almost looks like it explodes out from the uh, tips of the fire. Every, now, every and now and then, yeah. And that has to do with our lifetime being really low. So <laughs> it shouldn't have been half a second. It should have been something more like a second, a second and, and a half. half. So, yeah. Oh, that fixes everything. Yeah, now we have smoke that's consistently growing, which, nice. which looks a, a whole lot better. It's also made a much more consistent column of smoke too. So let's move on to our spark effect, which we're going to create by duplicating our smoke effect, at least for starters. So emitter, uh, duplicate, and let's immediately right click and go to emitter rename, and we're going to set this to sparks. Okay, now currently it's just a rehash of the smoke, so it just looks like we've got a whole lot of smoke. Uh, let's scroll over to our emitter so we can see this, and the very next thing we're going to do is change our material to something that's a little more spark-like. And under the effects package, let's just go all the way under ND effects. We're looking for a uh, particular material called flare, and the one we're looking for is MFX Particles Flare 01A. So we'll close out our generic browser. We'll go ahead and apply this. And we start getting Woo. <laughs> funny, puffy, yellow suns. As we are in the world of Unreal Tournament, we have souls that have been fighting for years, finally being released from the eternal fire. Sorry, I just thought I'd add that in real quick. I am now terrified <laughs> to be in the room. So uh, moving down, let's go down to lifetime. And we're going to set this to something quite a bit lower. We're going to go from a low range of about 0.75 seconds up to about a second and a half. So these don't live anywhere near as long. We're going to change our initial size to a range between only one and maybe three. Maybe, I don't know. Let's just start with what it looks like. Yeah, we, just, we need them really small because they're sparks. And again, just to drive it home, I don't need to be changing X, Y, and Z, but it's just a habit. So let's start with three. I think three might look pretty good. Hey, what do you know? Little bitty dots. Yeah, so we have these little dots coming out. Because you don't want this to be an overbearing effect. Actually, in this case, go ahead and darken up our background just a bit so that they can focus a little bit more on the sparks. All right. Then you can go all the way to black or you want some dark gray. That's some dark gray. All right. Yeah. There you go. You can see the sparks really coming out. Now, uh, take a moment, you know, if you're following along with me, and make sure your, your sparks aren't getting too big. Uh, and if you'd like, you can go ahead and turn off the smoke for a minute as well, just if they really want to concentrate on the sparks. I'm trying to scroll over real quick. And yeah, we could just kill that out. There you go. Out. Excellent. All right, yeah, so I've changed mine down to 2.5 and actually like that a little bit better. Now, again, one more time. Don't need to worry about the other two, but it's just habit. It makes me feel better. So uh, let's go down to initial velocity, which I'm going to change around just a little bit. We'll go between negative 25 for X and for Y. And a positive, I'm sorry, in Z, we're going to have a positive 50. Now, for our max, we're going to go between 25, 25, and 75. So we spread them out a little bit and slowed them down. That's right. Going and, up. And, but they have more Z power than they have anything else. They still do, yeah, pushing them upwards, but not quite as fast as they were a second ago. All right, now let's change that color over life a little bit. We're going to begin by uh, messing with that constant. We're going to set this to 2 for our red value, so really driving those reds. Uh, we'll go with 0.8. And uh, let's see, 0.4 for G and B, respectively. So we still have some very orangey, uh, but you know, really glowing, pretty bright particles popping out of this. All right, now this is pretty cool, but it, it could be better. There's some things we could do. I, I really want to get to the orbit module, but I guess I'll go down my list like a good little boy. All right, so let's change our initial location. We're going to set this to a range between negative 10 and 10. I'm not really worried about the Z location. I think it's working out pretty well. So let's say 10 and 10. Oh, that's a, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a really weird looking 10. And yeah, it was. And uh, we'll set this to negative 10 and negative 10. All right, so there we go. And the next thing we're going to change, of course, is our size scale, which this is going to be kind of interesting. We're going to simplify this quite a bit. We're going to nuke out. How many points do we have? I think we only, we only have two points, so we don't need to nuke out a point. I was expecting us to have three points at this point, and we don't. So our very first point is going to have an in value of 0.75. So th at three quarters of the way along our life, we're going to have a value of 1. And once again, let's go and show them the curve. Give that another oh, size that'd scale. That would be a really good idea. I always forget to do that. So, bink. There we go. And let's go ahead and hide the Y and Z curves. So, at three quarters of the way along our life, we have a value of, point, uh, a value of 1, like so. Now, we're going to uh, take our second point and give it 
an inval of 1, so we're at the end of the lifespan, but we're going to set our size down to 0.5. So we're actually shrinking toward the end of our life instead of growing like we were with smoke. Very nice. And it looks very sparkly. That's, yeah, that's what sparks do. If you sit around a campfire and you watch the sparks that pop off, they kind of fade out as they go up. I also like to add, this is a very sparky fire. <laughs> Now, something else that uh, we need to do at this point is we need to get rid of our rotation. These uh, these particles just have a circular pattern on them, so right. rotation is kind of irrelevant. So let's go ahead, right-click and delete module, and right-click and delete module. And that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, is the fun bit, because it would be cool if we had some more chaotic motion for our sparks. So we're going to add the mighty orbit module. <laughs> Already cool. Yeah, which if a bunch first, of fireflies yeah. going ooh ooh fire fire. It reminds me of the Ewok Adventure, if any, <laughs> or I think that's the one. It's one of the Ewok movies. But anyways, so uh, we're gonna change the offset, which is what is making these sparks fly so far away from our fire. We're gonna bring that way down, so that our max only goes down to ten. So there you go. It starts to really restrict that motion. And then we're going to change our, uh, let's see, take a look at what our rotation amount is if we scroll down just a little bit. So we have a, uh, a value of 0 to 1. I think that's actually going to work out just fine, though I think, uh, no, I think that'll work just great. I think okay. we're good there. And then our uh, rotation rate amount, we're going to go from negative 1 all the way to 1 so that we're, we're spinning. Uh, um, uh, no, don't, don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have an equal opportunity to go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, very nice. Now, that looks pretty good. There's only one more thing that I would do, and it's not even really on my list, is that I would probably make this uh, this particular emitter burst every now and then. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what sparks do. You, you're burning wood or something, and you get a pop. So let's just take a quick look at that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll up. Let's grab our spark emitter. And then if we come down to the burst list, I'm just going to add an entry. Now, how many sparks would we like to be fired out? Uh, let's say somewhere between, I don't know, what sounds good? We're emitting 15 every second. So let's say uh, 15 and 20. So we'll do 20 on our count. We'll do 15 here. Now, that means every second we're going to get a big pop full of, uh, of sparks, which we don't really want. So what I'm going to do is take our emitter duration, and we're going to change this to a random range between, say, I don't know, what sounds good? One second and maybe seven seconds? Okay. So it's going to be a big, wide range, so we don't really know when these... Uh, these bursts are going to come, but because we have set a range, we need to make sure that we uh, activate B emitter duration use range and B duration recalculate each loop. So now it's going to be kind of a subtle effect, but every so often along our effect, we're going to get this, there you go, big puff full of extra sparks as you get that, that pop, that one piece of uh, pine sap or whatever that explodes. And with that, our entire particle effect is done. Go ahead and turn our snow, our our smoke. snow back on. <laughs> our smoke back on, yep. and let's go ahead and save our package. All right. And now let's focus on getting it placed into the level. Very, very easily done. We'll go ahead and close out of Cascade. I'll reopen the generic browser, and let's pop down to the Zach particles our package. filter off. Which, yeah, that filter's going to kill me if I forget it. Now, I still see my asterisk here. So just as a check, I'm going to make sure that I save my package. Yeah, sometimes and make that go it'll away. save your package. Sometimes you just have to hit save a second time to get the asterisk to go away. Yeah, that just might not have updated. I'm That's just gonna I'm just gonna double check. So now we have our part uh, fire effect here inside the generic browser. Let's go ahead and close the browser. I'm gonna fly over here to our little fountain. This is uh, something I set up just to hold this effect. Let's right click, go down to add actor, and we'll choose add emitter part fire effect. And I'll turn on real time feedback. And we get some fire. And by default, it's going to look blue. That's because it's selected. Just select something else in your level, and it's going to get its actual color. Now, here's something, just uh, some food for thought. We created this at a very specific size. And you'll notice in this particular case, it looks kind of puny. But you can select your emitter, and you can actually change your draw scale 3D if you need your part uh, particles to get bigger or smaller. So let's set this to, I don't know, let's see what 2 looks like. Nice. So, yeah, now we have a nice pit o fire. And we could also, I mean, you could play with it, maybe move it up or down to really control where the effect became visible. You gotta, your player's eye is probably going to be somewhere right about here. Mm -hmm. So with that, our fire is placed in our level. Now, to really push the effect, we would need some sort of lighting in here. And we'll actually take a look at adding that and controlling that in the next video. So that's going to wrap things up for this video.